Jared Poland Fronos Photo. Dot com and welcome back to another Critiki McCritikerson. This time I take someone who paid for a 15 minute rapid fire critique and go into some extra time, AKA overtime, because I liked what I saw and there was a lot of room for me to add input and insight and I asked for permission to share their video with you, and they said absolutely. Now the thing with these critique videos on YouTube is that I know they don't get a ton of views. They just don't pop like a gear video because I can't come up with a title that's like, hey, watch me, watch me. But I know there's so much valuable information in these that when you do see these critiques, I highly recommend that you do check them out because there's a lot of nuggets of information that you can glean from these and better your photography because you watch them. So let's jump into the critique right now and I hope you enjoy it. All right, let's jump in to your Critiki McCritikerson. Sorry it took me a little longer to do. Uh, there was quite a lot going on here in November that I am just getting to this now. But I do want to take a look and tell you what I think. So we're looking at a Canon EOS 6D with a 70-300 to 5.5 to 5.6. So the questions in the email really surrounded, are you storytelling? Uh, are the images good? What do I think? I mean, the basic stuff about a critique, and that's exactly what I'm here to tell you about, whether what I think about it and how you can improve on it. So if this is one of the earlier shots, if you just got started, because it was uh, 2018 when these were taken, February 26th, um, it's fine, right? So from an exposure standpoint, I think you did a really good job because this is not an easy situation to get a good exposure. You're at 6,400 ISO. You're at 4.5. This is a a variable aperture lens so as you zoom from 120 to 300 or from 75 to 300 it's going to change the aperture it's going to go from four to four five to five six uh and then it's going to be at five six all the way out at 300. not the greatest lens in the world but not a bad little starting point with a 6d which is an okay full frame camera it was a good full frame camera with only one cross type sensor for autofocus so it wasn't the best there but exposure wise i think you're fine for just getting started i think this is fine for this entertainment right it's not the easiest light situation to get right also not the easiest thing to edit also i don't care about this noise i think that's perfectly fine i always talk about that you can always go black and white is another thing but i think the color is perfectly fine here so let's go on to the next one this is fantastic now it's in color i can see that it's in color because i got all this fringing right you can see all this purple fringing and green fringing that's because of the lens it's a it's a very inexpensive lens it's fine for outdoors. You're going to get some of this chromatic aberration. Most people will never notice it, but it's the imperfections that I see here. But this is fantastic. I would probably just make it black and white. I'd probably bump that contrast just a little bit and we'd call it a day. Um, that's where it started and that's where it went. I think it's perfectly fine in black and white because it's super void of color. But this is a fantastic image with your 70 to 300, uh, 75 to 300. This is this is great. The lines are fine. Uh, the colors are good. Sorry, the tones are good. I like your angle, and I like that these orbs draw you into the subject. It creates dimension, and because of that, this is a really, really good shot. This is fantastic. This is a fantastic image. What I love about this, I mean, you're at F10. I rarely ever shoot at F10 because I'm not shooting landscapes or inanimate objects, but in this case, the F10 makes this image tremendous. So why is it tremendous? Because we got three different la layers or levels of the museum. So we're at the Louvre here. This is Paris, I could tell. Uh, you've got your statue. You've got your IMP. I believe he's the one who designed the pyramid, which I believe the French hated at first. And now like, maybe they like it. I don't know. They're French. What I hate it. Oh, I hate you. Anyway, that's the French. And, and you've got the building, the Louvre in the background. Really fantastic layers. We don't have the sky. Maybe maybe a little bit up here is, is peeking through. But the angle is great. Your lines are great. This is fantastic. Fantastico. In, 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 uh, in, in, in French, it's uh, magnificent. Right? That's French for... Ma anyway. It could go black and white. I don't mind the color because I love the color of the Louvre. But I'm just going to pump it a little bit. Inanimate objects, you can totally get away with this. Probably a little too green. Introduced a little too much green. Let me throw some magenta in there and boom. So that's with a lot of contrast. We don't have to do that. We could keep it softer the way that you have it. Either way, just a subtle tightening, but this is an awesome shot. This is all right, but I could see how mushy it is, and that's because it's taken with a power shot. Um, 
it's fine. Gr- good composition. Nice job from up there. I would have preferred that you used your real camera. And the reason I say that is look how mushy it is, right? It mushes out because 400 ISO on a small sensor is low, so is high, considered high, and it just mushes out with the noise reduction. So I wish you had your real camera from wherever you were here, but this is very nice. It's very nice from that standpoint. So whereas you got the other one of the other landmark, the Louvre, better, I don't like this one as much. And the reason I don't like this is it's it looks to be highly cropped. Either that or this lens is just really terrible at 300, which I honestly think this lens is really terrible at 300, but I think it's more that it's actually cropped. And the more you crop, the more these imperfections show up. Look how much purple fringing there is. That's because of the lens. It's not saying like, look, if you use affordable gear and less expensive gear, that's fine. It's not, that doesn't change composition. That doesn't change cropping. Um, It just shows imperfections. And it just shows you what better glass will do in the long run. This is, I liked what you did with the other shot, stacking the Louvre and all of that. This, I get what you're trying to do, but it just, it didn't work. What we could do to make it work a little bit be- a little bit better is get closer. I also think that if you focused in on the top of the carousel and less with these just random people here, I think it would be perfectly fine. Um, but yeah, more of the top of the carousel and with the Eiffel Tower going up, I think could be slightly better. Uh, that's what I would do with that. This I can't tell. Are we in the car? Or are we out of the car? This is a reflection. I think this is a reflection of a mirror. Sorry, of of not a mirror, but of, of a car window with the Louvre in the background, and it's great. Even seeing that it's taken with a uh, power shot, I wouldn't have known that this was a power shot if I just looked at the image without seeing the data. So the other one I would have known that wasn't very good with the power shot because of how mushy it was. This is much. Be- this is great. I really like this shot. That is a winning shot. This gondola, not as much. Um, I, I, I wonder if you have a wider lens somewhere. I mean, from a storytelling standpoint, it's a gondola. If you're trying to tell a story, maybe you get people like a couple, right? Maybe they're standing in line and they're canoodling and they're like, oh, I love you so much. We're in Paris, gay Paris, and we're going to go make out in the corner. We're going to go have sex up in a gondola. Maybe if you got a picture of them holding hands before they get on the gondola. Maybe if there's a picture of them walking in line or canoodling or hugging or head on a shoulder, or maybe it's two guys or two girls will be equal opportunity. It could be anybody. Could be any type of couple that wants to show their love. So they could be in any love embrace. Then, if you want to show them in the gondola, making out, having sex, doing whatever they're doing, that would be great. It's public, so you can do it. If they're doing it in public, you could take pictures of it, I guess, and watch. Um, So then get them coming out of the gondola where they're now upset at each other and they're fighting and they break up. Get all of that. That's how you storytell. This, it's just like, man, there's a building out of uh, in focus in the background, and it's just a picture of it's just a picture right it's a snapshot but you have strong things and before the end of this video i'm going to show you how i'm going to show you how to select the best images that you have to show you that you 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 do have good stuff because we've already seen some of the good stuff um now it looks like we've got a 24 to 85 millimeter lens um not a great lens in terms of bowing look at how much bowing there is here that's not your fault that is the fault of the lens that is the fault of the lens so if I had the raw file, I could probably come down here and where is it, Jared? Where is lens correction? Lens detail, profile. I would hit enable profile. I'm not going to search for it, but I can manually do this. I, mean, I just want those lines to be straight. Now, when you do the straightening like this of imper- imperfect lenses, you're going you're gonna to have to crop. So I come to the crop tool. I'm going to have to come down here. Oh, I don't want to I want to do that. I just want to drag it in. And then I want to find the better angle. Right? Something like that, but now my lines aren't straight. So I come back to the crop tool, I grab the angle line tool, and you find a line in there and you make it straight. Now the line is straight and the bowing is more subsided. So I think you did all right with this exposure. You're at 100, which is your base ISO of this camera. You're at f22, which is all the way up there, and I think it's fine. Is is it a shot that sets the world on fire? The answer is no. Um, So I think this is slightly over. What is this, like 8 o'clock? No, it's 6.30. It's too... So I love your lines. Your horizons are much better, but it's overexposed, right? Or is it underexposed? It's too bright. I, I, I know over and underexposed. I understand how it works. My brain... 
for whatever reasons, reverses at all times. It's just too bright. Let's bring it down. Well, that means it's overexposed. Yeah, no, underexposed. Overexposed. Under. I can't do it. I can't do it. My brain just can't do it. It's like dyslexia for over and under. But look, see how much better this is? We make it a little darker. Because it is darker. It's a, no, that's too far, Jared. Again, I'm editing JPEGs. But you see the difference? That's where it started. We bring it down a little bit. But this is just too bright. The next one, it, are these the same? That's at 10, 10, 8, 18 at 636. And that's three minutes, four minutes, five minutes, six minutes uh, before. So if you're going to have the same images, then make sure that you edit them very similarly, right? So that they're going to match. This, the biggest issue with it, I mean, it's okay. I don't, I don't mind. I like all the tankers. The, the, the biggest issue here is the lines aren't straight. Now the horizon is straight. So that makes it infinitely better. Let me jump in here real quick because I want to show you this photo from the World Series edited with Fro Pack 3, starting with Zoolander. That looks cool. But check out Prestige Worldwide. That is awesome catch all. November Rain. Then we've got Mount Airy. Then we've got Mentos, followed by King Contrast. We've got Eckert. Capone, Canadian Tuxedo, Almost Famous, Fifth Element, but I also want to go up to Fro Pack 1 because with one click, check this out, Skittles. That's how good Skittles looks, and that's how I edited most of the photos that you've seen from the World Series. Because not only does it speed up my raw workflow, but it gives me a great starting point both on the computer as well as on mobile. And if you didn't know, we created 15 custom Lightroom presets that you can check out right now at fronosphoto.com slash fropack3. While you're over there, you can play with the sliders to see the befores and the afters. And if you decide to pick them up right now, they are currently on sale. Or if you want to get Skittles as part of Fropack 1, you can get the triple play bundle with Fropack 1, 2, and 3 and save even more. Now, let's get back to the vlog. Okay, London booth, a phone booth here. Uh, 300 millimeters. Look, for stuff like this, get closer. This lens just is terrible at 300. It just isn't sharp. That's not your fault. This lens just isn't sharp. It's not a great lens. You're doing good with it, though. We've seen good stuff. This is not, this is not good. Um, breaking the rules, 300 millimeters. There's no image stabilization. There's no image stabilization in the body or the lens. We're at 1 250th, which you should be able to handhold without shake. But the general rule of thumb is that you want to keep your shutter speed faster than your focal length. So if you're using a 600 millimeter lens, well, you want your shutter speed to be at least 1 640th, 1 800th, 1 1,000th of a second. In this case, at 300, you want to be at 1 3 20th, 1 400th, just to counteract any slight movement. It's not that big of a deal, but for something like this, for street photography, I'd rather see you use your 24 to 85 or something like a 35-18 fixed lens or a 50-18 fixed lens. I think that would be something better for, for your work. Now, this is great. This is 75 millimeters with your 70 to 300. This is fantastic. Do you need to be at, at, at 13200 at 800 ISO? The answer is no. Does it take away from your image? The answer is also no. So I think this is really nice. I just want to pump the contrast just a little bit. Let me bring the sky down a little, just a little bit. Oh, when I say sky, all I can think of is sky Rizzy. I was watching TV and they have stupid commercials for, for pharmaceuticals. But look at the difference. Look how much better it is. I think we can e even go further. Bringing down the exposure just a little bit. Warm it up just a little. That's where it started. That's where we're going. I'm going to give this like a best pick and I'll go back and pick the best of the best by the end of this. That's fantastic. Same, same, same lighthouse. I, I mean, I think this is fine, but what it's lacking is color and tone. Watch, boom. That's just contrast. I know it's personal preference, whether you like contrast or not, and now it's too green. I'm gonna take out the magenta, I can see it, or I'm gonna take out the green by adding some magenta and pull down on the, the, the yellow. Look at the difference. It still may be magenta, watch. I can just see it. That's green, I actually don't mind the green, that's too magenta. Let's split the difference. There you go. Look at the difference. And this is good. I really like this shot. This is okay. Settings-wise, ooh, 1 1,000th one of a second. Sorry, one, ISO 1,000, 1 3200th of a second at 4 or 5. That's way too much. Remember, there's this is inanimate objects. 
This is a landscape. Things aren't really moving. Yes, the clouds are moving. The water's moving. But we're talking about we're not talking about people or freezing action. So we don't need to be at one thirty two thousandth of a second. Sorry, thirty two hundredth of a second, which means you don't need to be at one hundred ISO. We're at one twenty five millimeters. You could be at one one twenty fifth of a second. Let's see. Let's go. Let's go. Let's drop the ISO to one hundred and see what happens. We're at one thousand. We cut it in half. We're at five hundred. We're at two fifty. We're at one one twenty five. So three stops. Let's go down three stops of light. Negative three. Oh, but it's so dark, Jared. Yes, it's negative three stops we went down because we went to 125 ISO. Now let's go down three stops with the shutter speed. 13200 goes to 1600, goes to 1800, goes to 1 400th of a second. Let's give back those three stops of light. We would have the same exact exposure, except now we're at 1 400th of a second at 4 or 5 at 125 ISO. It's going to be much cleaner. That's how you build an exposure. That's how you do it. It would be much cleaner. Positives. Lines are straight. Good job with your horizon. This is too bright again. We need to bring it down. What time is this? It's in, it's at about noon, right? So I think it's fine. It's not the greatest scene in the world because it's just blah. But your horizon is straight. But we can bring it down. Watch. Bring it down. Raise that contrast a little bit. I'm going to end up splitting the difference here. Remember, I'm editing a JPEG. The raw file would be much cleaner. But look at the difference. See how bright? We're bringing some details back. I don't know that I like my tones as much. There, there we go. Tones and I. Much better. Meh. Not in focus. Also, it's just a snapshot. We're only at 130. Okay, we're at 1320 at 63. Uh, There's really no reason for you to ever be at 63 on this lens. This is a 56 lens. The max you should be at is 56 unless you're doing those creative things. This isn't it. So if I'm shooting wide at 75, I'm at f4. There's really no reason for you to be at five, uh, six, three for this unless you're in auto and the camera is doing it for you. It's also too bright. We just got to bring it down. It's like two stops too bright. No, it's about a stop too bright. Then it's too warm right there because of the, the sun. But you just got to bring it down. You see how... Wait, what did I do here? You see how bright it is? Just got to bring it down more. All right, there we go. So I like this shot because I like the, the seagull, but the first thing I noticed is it's not straight. And you're like, Jared, how do you know that it's not straight? Well, look at the look at the rooftop, right? The rooftops aren't straight. This one isn't straight. It's not the Leaning Tower of Pisa. So what I would do, and I'm not saying that everything always needs to be straight, but watch what happens to the bird. See how much better it is now that it's straight. The line is straight. It doesn't, it just, there was something awkward about it. I'm going to tighten this up just to give it a little more contrast. A little bit of warmth. There we go. I like that. Very nice. Let's see. We're indoors. We're at 5,000 ISO. Good job on your exposure. One, two, what, one, one twenty-five at 5,000. That's fine. You're at four, five. Uh, oh, it's a variable aperture lens. That's why, because you're zoomed to 85. But for shooting indoors, you got your exposure right. Because there's not much you could do here. Well, the only other thing you can do is super slow shutter speed, but you need to be on a tripod. You're going to need to be on a tripod because you don't want to, you're not going to want to handhold it at super slow shutter speeds. But I think you did fine building it the way that you built it. Um, this has potential. It has potential, but not in this. The, the tree sucks. The tree's annoying. The, this metal thing is annoying. But the details of this architecture is fantastic. So how do we build on that? This is where you tell the photo story. This is where you zoom in or you get straight on with the building and you just go vertical and just show all of these these you know, the edge to edge, right? From this edge to this edge, everything is symmetrical. So you get the symmetry. You come in here and you get these colors and tones of these buildings. You shoot down the line. You get this waving architecture here. You look for those details, the, the wides, the mediums, the tights, the details, and you do it with this architecture. Also, this, this processing, we can pump this up, pull down the sky a little bit. Just look at the difference in tones. Much better.
So this is just blah, right? It's not anything special. There is a power. No, that's not a power glider. That's a seagull. Good job, Jared. It's a seagull. It's good composition. I like that this is on the third, right? In the third, but it's just a boat, right? Boats and hose, which is why we should probably use Prestige Worldwide. And what this lens is just no good at 300. You can see it. You can just see how it just loses its sharpness. That's not a you thing. That's the, that's the lens thing. Um, that's why slightly better glass is going to be better in the long run. You can... All right, this is super imperfect. Um, what I think happened here, we're at 1 50th of a second at 5, at 640. I think you got the exposure super wrong. I think, if I was to guess, that it was like this, and then uh, me, even like this, and you brightened it up. That's why there's so many imperfections of these things. You can see all the edits. So imperfection, I don't care about high ISO. I don't care if your exposure is off slightly. When you're off a ton, all the imperfections show up. I'm going to go black and white. I'm going to pull down a lot here. I don't think there's anything we can really do to save it because it's already crunchy in the JPEG, maybe in the raw file, but you just got to be very careful. I, I like this. I just think that we're lacking in, in texture. I'm going to bring down the exposure, pump up the contrast, texture a little bit. Tweak the color. go with this i think that looks good right i think that's a good start this is where it was and this is where we're at another thing you could do storytelling wise is shoot down like get closer right shoot down the clothesline get some of these clothespins in focus with these blowing in the wind out of focus right get closer find those details get closer get straight on show the stuff flapping in the wind maybe do a long exposure to show it flapping in the wind that's something you could do this is fantastic i really like what you did here because if you put like a dog here or a kid or a person, this would lead you into the frame. You're using these out of focus areas. It's drawing you through leading lines. You've got the ocean. Your lines are straight. This is gorgeous. Really nice job. This isn't far off. I really love this composition. I love this angle. I think you did a great job. I just think you brightened up the, the, the rocks too much. I'm going to hit it with contrast. Pull down on the highlights. Pull back on the exposure ever so slightly. Nope, I'm pulling back on those shadows. Let's warm it up just a little bit. And I think that's fantastic. That's where it started. That's where we take it. This is a great shot. Oh, I've been forgetting to label stuff. We'll label by the end. This right here is lacking in contrast. See, we just pumped that contrast and it's much better. Um, I wish we had more details in the sky. Oh, there we go. There's my more details in the sky. Not going to go too far, but you're doing a really good job even with that lens. You know, I know it's a basic kit lens. So I think this is good too. I really li I, I like this. Um, I'm going to give that a, a red as one of the better ones. So I think it's fine. It's that lens, just not the greatest lens in the world. This, I, I find that it's over processed before I even touched it. Right, What it looks like to me, because this is where it's zeroed out, what it looks like to me is that you overdid the, the shadows and brought the highlights back, which gives it a very HDR look. That's what we don't want. But if I pump the contrast and I bring down a little bit, I still don't think I can save it because I think it's been over crunched in the, in the JPEG already, but it's also not terrible. Could black and white save it? No. No, Jared. Black and white did not save it. Let me cut in here real quick and let you know that this video is brought to you by Squarespace. If you're looking to build your very own online portfolio, use what I've been using for over 10 years, 10 years for my personal website at jaredpoland.com because it's simple, easy, affordable, and I don't need to know coding. In fact, in a matter of minutes, I can have a new gallery up and out into the world and even put things up for sale and sell it in the store. So to get your 14 day free trial, head on over to squarespace.com slash photo. If you decide that it's for you, use the code code Frono's photo at checkout to get 10% off your first order. Now let's get back to the video. All right. I mean, I like the feel of it. I thought this was a chateau, but I think it's just the, 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 a, a building. This just needs to be pumped. Look how much it brings it to life. You can come down with the exposure, but look at the difference. This is where it started. This is where it ended. Look at how much just making some slight edits change your stuff. So get better with the edits. This is overexposed. Well, it's too bright. I'm going to bring down the exposure. 
pump this contrast. See, see how much better it is? Look, that's where it started. This is where it finished. You have all of this texture and color that is brought out, even with this JPEG. So much better. So much better. Um. Oh, look at that. 5D Mark IV. Very nice with a 7300 still. Okay. Um. I love this because it has like every mode of transportation you could ever think of. We've got boats. We've got hose somewhere. There's a hose somewhere. Guys can be hose too. Don't don't think I'm just talking about women. Men are definitely hose. We've got a paraglider. We've got cars somewhere. I'm sure there's bikes. I'm sure there's scooters. Is there a rail station? That would be like the everything. I just think we need to pump this up. Bring down the exposure a little bit. Oh, and we have the airplane right here, which I think is a 737, if I had to guess. All you aviation nerds would be like, no, it's an Airbus. I don't know. Don't yell at me. I'm not an aviation nerd. Nerd. This is where it started. That's where it finished. Oh, sorry. That's where it started. This is where it finished. I think it's just tighten it up. Ah. Skirberdurden. It's a skirberdurden. Borka Borka. Denmark, Holland. Where are we? Scandinavian. This needs to be pumped. This is probably one that calls for Skittles. Oh, yeah. That's what Skittles would do to it. So Skittles would give it a really good starting point. Oh, shit, yeah. Silver Tide looks awesome. You could get... Oh, that looks good, too. The Sandlot. Wow. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Cookies and cream. Most of these work. Holy Jesus. Most of these are really... Most of those presets work. I mean, I could go black and white and live with it. Go super contrasty. Totally get away with it. It's really good. I really think Skittles did a nice job on this. I, I, I like this shot. We're going to give that a... A six as well. Oh, and I want this six is a, a red label. Um, oh look at that seventy to two hundred. Is it a sigma because it's not reading by the camera, which means it's probably a, a third party, which is fine. If it's a seventy two hundred two eight, and you're at four or five, you need to be at two eight. You just need to be at two eight. That's just there's no ifs ands or buts about it for this type of shot. Um, it's a good composition. One thing you could do, one thing so. The 2 is going to allow you to open up one stop, which means you could go up to one six fortieth to help freeze the action, or you can go the other way, slow the shutter speed down, get the spinny, spinny, uh, slow shutter speed. Oh, boy, no. It's fine in terms of, like, but it's not. It's a Samsa. So done with the camera, done with the camera. Oh, boy, they look terrible with the camera. Like, these are good pictures if they weren't done with a camera. Uh, sorry, a phone. It, yes, they're terrible pictures for a phone. Composition-wise, good. Everything like your angle, like this is this would be great if this wasn't done with a, a phone. Just look how mushy it becomes. So that would be good. Just remember that. Take your camera with you. Um, we're at one four, we're at four thousand ISO, one two fiftieth. If you have a seventy two hundred again, this is where you need to open up to two eight. So five, we'll call it five six. Goes to four, goes to two eight. Two stops of light. We can go to one two fiftieth. Go to one five hundredth, one one thousandth of a second at four thousand. Or we could go to 2,000 ISO at 1 500th of a second and get the same thing. Do I care about this noise? Not really, because look, I can hide it, and I'm not talking about noise reduction. Watch what contrast does. Goodbye, noise. Bring the exposure down a little bit. Don't want to go too far with the highlights. But what I don't want to do is introduce more noise by doing clarity and texture. Clarity and texture are more, they do sharpening. So we don't want to overdo that. But look at the difference. Look at this. Where it started where it finished look at that purple look at that princely color awesome so that's much better this is fine i don't think it's sharp i think it looks all right i think this is fine i think it's okay look i think we're in extra overtime by the way our 15 minutes it's a 15 minute rapid fire critique that's actually an overtime um it's fine good job with the details this i think is just too tight we lack what's going on it's also not sharp there might be some movement there it's too tight, just the dog. It's just too tight. Let me, let me see a wider shot of that dog. I know you're just going for the eyes, but let's go with that. Meh. That definitely gets a meh. I don't think there's anything I can do to save this one. It's just there's not enough interest for me in that. This is, this is gorgeous. Very good. Where it started, though, that's where it started. You need to work on this editing much better 
this, watch this. Pull that down, pump that up. Either go with some long exposure, but this is where it started. That's where we edited it much better. I love these houses. It's just not sharp. It's that 70, it's that probably that 7,300 again. Um, contrast. Yeah, I mean, I love the depth here. If there's ever one that called for F11 or F16, it's probably this to give you more in focus. Um, oh, one thing I would also do is make sure you don't have this wall down here. Oh, that's not a wall, Jared. That's the top of uh, another roof. I would still get rid of it because I think it's a distraction on the bottom of the frame. You could just, uh, you know, go like that, and I think you would save the day there. That's all right. It's all right. More contrast. More contrast. This definitely needs more contrast. Look at the colors pop. We go from this to this. I don't worry that I'm losing a little bit down low. I think that's fine. I think that's a nice shot. I love these flat on shots. I think you're doing a great job with these, but I want to tighten it up. This is good. Is that a Swedish flag? No, Jared. Swedish is yellow and blue, you dumbass. Dumbass. And I'm not really a dumbass. I'm like the self help guy, like I say. I'm not a, you don't, I don't, I don't really believe that. But Denmark? Sweden is not this, Jared. What I love about this shot, I'm going to tighten it up a little bit. I love that you have the color of the flag, the blue gray of the background. I think that's really cool. Nice job. And then this isn't bad. It needs contrast. Look at how it tightens up. That's really good. Starts with this, ends with this. Now let, let's go back and pick the best of the best. All right, let's 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 do that. Let's get out of develop. No, we'll stay in develop. That's all right. That's not going to see this. Awesome six. This awesome six. Meh. If it was with the real camera, better. Now look, a fifty. If we end up with like ten solid keepers from a set, that's a good thing. This one, no. This one, absolutely. Even though it's taken with a phone. Why does it go to the next one? Oh, that's because caps lock is on. Dumbass. There I go again, calling myself a dumbass. Not so much here. Not so much here. No. Mm -mm. No. You know what? If I went like, mm, and I tweened it, mm, maybe. It's getting a maybe. No. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. No. Nah. Nah. No. No. Yes. I still like this one. No. No to this. No to that. Mm-mm. I could go with this. I definitely go with this. I love that. This we already picked is awesome. This, you know what? I'm going to give it to it. Yes. This I think is good. This with different editing, you know, going back to the start, I'm going to give that one a go. I love how this one looks too. I do like this. I like that. I already picked that. I already picked that. No, they would be better if they weren't with that uh, phone. Not so much because that's not sharp. I think this needed your F16. You know, we're losing sharpness on that. No, 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 no. It's all right. We'll give it to it. A lot of dust in here. You got to clean this up. With this healing thing, look. This is how you do it. This is what happens when you're at F22. You just got to clean that stuff up. No, 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 no. Yes. No, yes. Yes. And yes, so how many solid keepers did we come up with here? Look at that. That's 21. That's 21 pictures here. These are great. So when you tweak down your images, right, edit, your, your job, and I'm not saying you did anything wrong. You sent me 50 because this is a critique. This is how we learn. But to cut down and pick 20, we could probably edit some out here. These are great. Look at how much better it stands out when you tweak your images. I'm not talking about just editing, but when you pick the best of the best and you don't show the rest of the rest, that's what makes you a great photographer. I've said it a million times. All right. Uh, no, this is still good. I said it a million times. You're the last line of defense between putting out quality work and garbage. If you put out garbage, it's your fault. Sometimes you just don't know. And that's why we do these critiques. I think you're in a great spot. Um, what I would suggest, better glass. If you have the 7200, it's good. you're going to see a difference when you start to use better glass. You can pick up a 51.8 for an expensive or a 51.4 for your EF. There's a lot of used EF glass going around right now that's fantastic. I would look into that. I would look into a 35 millimeter. I think that would be great for street. But with what you're what you have gear wise, 
great job. I really think you did a fantastic job, so keep it up. So I hope you got a lot out of that critique. Now, the things that I took out of it is that they're using some basic lenses, and there's nothing wrong with using basic lenses, but you can see the imperfections that might be holding back this photographer because the 70 to 300 at 300, it just doesn't look great. That's just one of those things about stepping up and getting better glass when you can. It doesn't need to be the most expensive glass in the world, but it does need to be slightly better. Now, the interesting thing is, after I sent this back to them, they commented, I say them because it was a, a boyfriend or a husband who bought it for his wife or girlfriend, and she gave some feedback and said that she was very happy with what I had to say with everything, and she doesn't like changing lenses. That is a terrible excuse. You need to change lenses. I run through five, six, seven lenses on a shoot sometimes because you have to change it up because there is no one lens to roll them all. Now, if you just wanna travel around and take okay pictures, that's up to you. If you wanna take better images, use better glass and don't be afraid to change lenses. So that's where I'm gonna leave this one, guys. Thank you very much for watching. Jared Pullen, Photo.com. See ya.